Welcome to the CQ Blind Hams channel. My name is Chris Miller, November Echo 5 Victor, and this channel has been established to demonstrate the use of ham radio equipment from a blind perspective. We will discuss with audio files how accessible equipment is, or in some cases, maybe how equipment isn't accessible. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the channel, 7-3. Hey, this is Russ, KN4MLR for CQ Blind Hams. Today, I'm going to talk about crimping tools. Yeah, well, it's not very exciting, but if you're like me, I've tried to uh, solder on a lot of PL259 connectors and all I end up with are loose connections, internal shorts, solder all over the center pins and burnt fingers. Well, and those are the those are the good points. I finally decided to try my luck with a, a crimping tool and I found one on Amazon for about $43 from the Coax Warehouse. Uh, they, uh, you have to pay $7 shipping. And I'm sorry, Prime members, but that's the way it goes. But uh, for about $51, you get a crimping tool plus 10 PL259 crimp on connectors, which makes it a pretty sweet deal. The coax warehouse ships pretty quick. I got mine in about four days. And what you get is a very well-made crimping tool. It's solid, or it's all steel, it's not solid steel, but um, the, about the only thing that isn't steel are the cushion grips on the handles. Now this is a ratcheting crimping tool so that as you uh, squeeze the handles together, there's a ratcheting mechanism that holds the jaws in place so that if you release pressure on the handles, the jaws hold their position. And uh, this is so you can uh, kind of get a better grip on it. It's also uh, uses a compound lever uh, arrangement in the in the tool itself which allows it to create an enormous amount of pressure on the crimp that's, that's being made. Now there's a point that needs to be made here. This is not a tool you want to leave around small children. Uh, if they decide to pick it up and put their fingers in the jaws and start uh, pushing the handles together, squeezing the handles together, uh, it's going to be pretty painful because you, they, the jaws won't release. There is a lever that does uh, allow you to release the pressure on the jaws, but it's kind of hard to find, uh, especially if you're a child and you don't know it's there. And uh, so it's just best to keep it, keep it out of the hands of children or really stupid adults. Um, as I said, this, this tool is, a, is very well made. It should li uh, last a lifetime, uh, assuming you don't leave it out in the rain. But um, when you get the tool, what you'll see are three holes in the jaws that are for the various crimp sizes. Uh, I got, the one that I got was for RG8X, and the, the opening for that particular uh, connector is the largest opening that's the closest one uh, to the handles. The other two openings, I really don't have an idea what they're for. Maybe a cable connection and maybe the smallest one might be for crimping connectors on the ends of wires. Um, if you look at the move up towards the tip, there is yet another hole on one side, but on the other side, you really can't feel anything with the jaws closed. If you open the jaws up, you'll find three small openings, and these are for crimping the tips of the connectors. And for the uh, RG8X uh, crimps that I got, uh, the center hole is the one you want to use. So really, there isn't a whole lot to explain about the tool itself. What's more interesting are the connectors, and they really aren't what I expected. Um, I don't. I thought they would be some slight variation of a solder on PL259, but these connectors are noticeably shorter than the uh, solder on connectors. Um, on one end of the connector, of course, is the center pin, and coming out from the center pin about two or three millimeters from the end you'll you'll find a shoulder that drops down in diameter and this is where the center conductor gets crimped to the center pin on the back side of the connector is a stem that comes out from the center of the connector and 
um, this stem is hollow and what you do after you get your cable all stripped down the uh, dielectric and the center connector slip through that uh, center stem and then the copper braid goes on top or the outside of the stem just lays flat on it there's nothing to fold back it just lays flat and from that point you slide the um, the ferrule or the crimp crimping sleeve over the braid and that stem and crimp it down and then of course turn around and crimp the tip what I do to measure out how much to of the of the jacket to remove and of the braid to remove is to take the connector itself lay it down next to the cable and have about a quarter of an inch more cable in length than the total length of the connector then at the end of the stem which is on the back side of the connector that's where I cut the outer shield or outer jacket of the uh, coax after you peel off the outer uh, uh, the outer jacket then what I do is use the stem as a measuring gauge to, to determine how much of the copper braid and dielectric to cut off and you want to cut off the same length as the stem uh, after you're finished uh, you'll have quite a bit of uh, you have quite a bit of center conductor sticking out because uh, it, obviously it's going to be a quarter of an inch longer than the uh, than the connector itself. But then you slide the center connector and the dielectric through the center of the stem, and the uh, as I said the stem slips underneath the braid, and you just shove it all away until the stem meets the outer jacket of the uh, of the coax and at that point the braid should just come just short of the connector uh, the body of the connector um, at that point you can slide the ferrule over and over the top of the of the braid uh, the the ferrule covers uh, the half of the ferrule covers the the braid and the the stem the other half uh, covers the coax you take that put it in the largest opening of the uh, of the crimping tool and start squeezing doesn't take a whole lot of pressure the the compound leverage really does a a number as far as uh you know creating force on that uh, crimping sleeve and when you get the the handles squeezed all the way together they'll release and that part of it's done the only thing left to do now is to crimp the tip and i usually at this point trim off the excess um, center conductor the reason I, cr I i cut it on the long side is i just want to make sure that the center conductor is coming all the way up to the part that gets crimped and so the the tip of the uh, of the uh, center pin is put in the it's the center hole of the one of those three up along the side of the crimping tool you just put just the tip in not the whole uh center pin but just the tip squeeze it home and you're done uh, i forgot to mention that when you initially set it up uh you test it with your own meter and make sure you don't have any shorts but i've rarely had uh an internal short before i crimped it and that is that only occurred because i had the braid and the dielectric cut just a little bit too long trimmed it back shoved it all back together and was good to go after you're finished you have one solid connection uh, the crimp makes both a mechanical and a, a very strong electrical connection on the back side of the of the connector the uh, tip is also firmly uh, crimped in place so uh, this is um, this is to me it's every bit as good as a solder on connector I'm sure there will be people who will argue otherwise but um, uh, if if you wanted to be able to make your own connections not have to rely on somebody else coming in and make them for you this is the way to go uh, I really felt a little sense of independence when I, the first one that I cut I had a, a feed line coming into the shack and it just kept getting shorter and shorter with every attempt I made to make a solder connect connection I thought if I don't get this right I'm gonna have my my rig is gonna be hanging from the wall but uh, uh, put that uh, crimp on connector and I've been going strong ever since uh, is it 
uh, strong enough, good enough for an outside connection? I don't see why not. If you pack it uh, with, you know, wind it with electrical tape or uh, pack it with that, whatever that taffy is, <laughs> I forgot what it's called, but uh, uh, then it's going to be ever bit as weatherproof or moisture proof as, uh, as a standard connector. And if you don't do it with either connection, a, a solder on or a crimp on, if you don't protect it from the weather, you're going to have corrosion. So that's um, uh, something you do just uh, standard operating procedure. But um, that's about the uh, about all I can tell you about it. As I said, it is a very well made tool. I hope in the show notes that there will be the URL for the uh, Amazon website. As I said, it does actually come from the Coax warehouse. Uh, they do ship very quickly. And uh, this, this is a great tool to have in your, uh, in your bag of tricks. And I, as I said, it'll, it'll last a lifetime. That's about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for listening. Be sure to click on the, um, the button to uh, subscribe to CQ Blind uh, Hams. And uh, hopefully we'll catch you a little bit later on down the log uh, for another podcast. Take care. Best 73s. This is Russ KN for MLR.